from Susan's Journal, Monday, July 15th. We spent the last two days in Dawson Creek, British Columbia. This is mile zero on the Alaska Highway. It was very interesting to see the famous sign, get our picture taken, and visit the area. We stayed at Mile Zero Campground and there was a car show going on in town and a lot of them were staying at our campground. We spent Sunday touring the area, visiting the Kiskatawa Bridge. It is the longest curved wooden bridge still in use on the Alaska Highway. It was interesting to see, drive across, and take photos of. We also walked around a local park and into town for a visit to the Dairy Queen for a blizzard. We also walked around briefly to see the cars in the show. Historic Kiskitnia Bridge, the longest wooden curved bridge in existence. in existence, and it is on the mile marker 21 on the Alaska Highway. Are you the New York plate? Yeah. What part of New York? Right, right next to it, yeah. This bridge was built when, Susan, in 1942? What? This bridge was built in 1942? Yeah. Part of the original Alaska Highway? Yeah. And the only, did you already say this, the only wooden bridge? <laughs> well. Longest curved wooden bridge in existence. So it's Monday, July 15th. We're on the Alaska Highway. We're currently about 118 miles north of mile zero. And we're between the towns of 101 in Fort Nelson, uh, traveling through British Columbia. And most of what we've been seeing are these wooded areas and a lot of uh, natural gas um, industry and places that they're doing drilling or exploratory drilling along the way. Anything else? Nope, that's it for now. Talk to for now. Love you. This is also one of the expectations on traveling the Alaska Highway is road construction that stops you for long periods of time. The guy doesn't look like he's focusing because of the reflection on the car in front of me. At least it's a pretty area. Haven't seen any wildlife today yet. We are still in British Columbia. We're entering the Northern Rocky area. We've been up over a couple of grades already that are pretty uh, spectacular. We are on the Alaska Highway at Stone Mountain Provincial Park and approaching Summit Lake, which is the highest elevation on the Alaska Highway. And clearly, that's why they call it Stone Mountain. Very pretty area. Summit Lake sign. Summit Lake sign, right there. Very pretty. One of our numerous pee stops along the way. Usually Susan goes on the trailer and traffic is so light that I could usually just do my business outdoors. But this, uh, this is kind of like what the traffic has been like, is just uh, pretty much non-existent. Other vehicles, mainly, um, mainly uh, RVers, but uh, we certainly don't see any commercial vehicles coming through here. From Susan's travel log, Wednesday, July 17th. We drove from Fort Nelson, BC to Lyre Hot Springs yesterday. It was one of the prettiest drives on the journey, and especially since leaving the Banff Jasper area. We drove over Summit Lake Pass at 4,280 feet, the highest spot on the Alaska Highway. We drove through some beautiful valleys that cut through the Northern Rockies. It stopped several times for the view, once for construction, and once to let about 10 stone sheep cross the road. 
We passed Moncho Lake, which was beautiful and very big, over seven and a half miles long. I think these are stone sheep. Pretty good sized group of them. How about the little baby Look at over the there? baby. Oh, aren't they sweet? Look at them all. Wow, that's a big group. Yeah. Should we get a snap of them? Yeah. So we've seen a number of these washes driving along through the Northern Rockies here in British Columbia. And in, in a number of cases, even though there's culverts, it's hard to imagine that the, uh, it's hard to imagine that the culverts could handle all the flow because of how spread out the flow is on the other side <laughs> of the road. And it, it's hard to imagine that the flow doesn't go over the road in many cases. Does that sound right? Yeah. It's a big culvert, but still. Almost looks like anthills down there. <laughs> Not anywhere near the snow up here that we saw down in uh, uh, Alberta. So our stops also become Bella's water stops, so she gets her drink of water whenever we stop. Sometimes she's very thirsty. Continuing with Susan's Travel Journal. The Liard Hot Springs Provincial Park Campground is wonderful. The sites are nicely separated and fairly private. Last night after a delicious steak dinner, we left Bella and went to the Hot Springs. We spent about a half an hour in the pool area. Very hot, but wonderful. It felt really good to Rick with his shingles. We will spend a quiet day today and most likely go to the Hot Springs again later. Tomorrow we enter the Yukon Territory. Very exciting. on July 17th, an entry by Rick. Nice sunny day until around four o'clock and then the rain moved in and temperatures dropped about 10 degrees. We grilled salmon and ate inside due to the coolness. After dinner, we walked to the hot springs in the rain. We saw a moose and her young one on the walk over. It rained quite hard while we were in the hot springs, but it didn't matter. The water was great and the steam coming off the water due to the cooler temperatures was very neat looking. Looks like we'll need to break down the screen room in the morning as it is still raining as of 9.15 at night. Susan just won double solitaire, which is good because she has been depressed over a losing streak she's had. Good for me. There's the source of the hot water. And this end of the pool is extremely hot. It cools off as you go further away from this area. And the lower part down there is uh, I would say warm, but not hot. Would you agree? Mm. But all of this section that we're looking at is hot, and it's very hot <laughs> down this way. Oh, there big guy. This is our longest delay for construction so far, right around 22 minutes, um, just after entering the Yukon. However, we were 
waiting in British Columbia uh, before we were finally able to follow this pilot car, but because of the work having the both lanes blocked, we're uh, at a standstill again. I'm sure we'll be progressing shortly. On the BC-Yukon border, the Alcan crosses the border about six times. This is the unofficial sign at the first crossing and the official provincial sign when you finally arrive in the Yukon Territory for good. From Susan's Journal, July 19th. We left Lyard and drove to Teslin Lake Provincial Park. It was a beautiful sight, just $12 per night and all the firewood we wanted. We walked down to the lakefront, looked up and saw a quick storm moving in, so we quickly made it back to camp and put everything away. After the rain in Lyard, all of our stuff was wet, but now it was dry and we wanted it to stay that way. We cooked dinner inside and waited out the rain, and we walked around the small 27-site campground and since it was now clear, decided to get wood, and we had a lovely campfire that evening. Yeah. So where are we? Oh, we're at Fox Lake. Fox Lake Burn. At the Fox Lake Burn. We're at a rest area in the Yukon Territory. And uh, we are on the Klondike Highway. Which there's a thunderstorm over there. But the Klondike Highway is taking us up to Dawson City. Carmax, Yukon Territory, and the Yukon River, and that's the Klondike Highway going across the bridge there as we continue to head north. Highway. It's not unusual to see road that's maybe two miles in front of you and two miles behind of you and there's not another vehicle in sight, which is currently the case. There's nobody in my rearview mirror and uh, we haven't, uh, we've seen two cars probably in the last, what, 15, 20 minutes? Oh, maybe even half hour. Yeah, maybe even half an hour. So anyway, that's it. Not talk. <laughs> um, this is kind of uh, surreal. <laughs> we we heard all the horror stories about the long waits to get on the ferry to get across the Yukon River, which is what we're doing right now. But we decided that, uh, well, I guess I decided, and Mom went along with it, that uh, we would get up at four o'clock and head over, and we never stopped. We just drove right onto the ferry, and the ferry took off, and here we go onto the other side for the um, top of the world highway.
Okay, we are on the top of the world highway on a perfectly gorgeous clear morning. We are so lucky. Ferry dock, no waiting, nobody in sight, just us and the mountains and the road. And no animals. And no animals. Uh, no animals. 4.50 in the morning, Alaska time, even though we're in the Yukon. My body is saying it's 5.50 in the morning, but... So as you can see, we really are... Good morning, Rick. Good morning. The sunshine. It's pretty morning. From Susan's Journal, July 22nd. We made it to Alaska yesterday. We made the decision to get up at 4 a.m. and get to the ferry to hopefully beat a lot of the other travelers. We did just that. We were the only ones at the dock and drove right on and onto the ferry and it took us across. We felt like we owned the road. There were no other cars on the road. It was clear and we could see forever. What an experience. We got to the border crossing and waited an hour before they opened at 8 a.m. Alaska time, 9 a.m. to us. After all we had read about what we could bring and what we could not bring back into the United States, we had no problems at all. We did miss the turnout at the rest area with the Welcome to Alaska sign. We were both bummed a little, but it was not worth trying to turn around on that road. Oh well. Caribou! Our first caribou! Yay! I'm a happy camper! got quite a rack on them. Yes, they do. Ay. This is the uh, top of the world highway rest area. Because we were so early, <clears throat> excuse me, we've had the road to ourselves, which has been kind of neat. So it's 6.41, that's the border into the U.S., the, the border that's the furthest north between Canada and the United States. They don't open for another hour and 20 minutes. So we'll probably go over there and, and sit and just make some, do some puzzles or something. Continuing from the journal, the top of the world highway ends at the border crossing and the Taylor Highway begins. It was dirt and gravel, narrow, twisty and rindy with many hairpin turns. We were very glad it was so early in the day and there was not much in the way of travelers coming towards us. We stopped in Chicken, Alaska to look around. I bought a t-shirt and a couple of magnets and we each had a coffee. We continued on and the road seemed to improve for the most part. We made it to Toke, stopped for gas and wine and a few groceries.